As you know, uh, this time last year, we uh, uh, talked about ClearLine for the first time publicly. Um, you were kind enough to have us on to discuss it, and uh, it's gone very well uh, and, and met all expectations. Uh, again, ClearLine, not a DSP replacement, never intended to be, but in instances, particularly in streaming, where you have these dollars that are kind of trapped in the broadcast world, incredibly fee-sensitive dollars, and dollars that necessarily aren't going to be biddable, auction-oriented dollars, but more think of an insertion order being converted to a programmatic delivery. There's savings in terms of workflow. Um, there's enhancement in terms of targeting. Um, but price is determined already by seller, buyer, and so it's not what we think of as this DSP open auction. Uh, that's the use case for, for ClearLine, and it's, it's really played out as we expected and, and, and totally uh, think that uh, this upfront season, uh, ClearLine will uh, be a significant player in, in getting some of those dollars over into the programmatic universe. And who are the buyers? Are they the brands? Are there categories? Are there? Is it through the agencies? Or it's all through the agencies, uh -huh. yeah. And so you know, we have uh, formal agreements in place with uh, Group M, with Horizon, uh, with uh, Stagwell. Um, uh, we talked about you know our relationships uh, with previous partners. It's also quite global in, in nature now. I mean, the nine from Australia uh, is using it as well as. Um, the OMG group uh, in, in, in Germany. So it's making headways a, a across the globe as well. Uh, tell us a little about infrastructure, your work with Media Ocean, and, and, and a little bit about that alliance and what you hope to accomplish there. Yeah, so, you know, Bill Ramsey, uh, great guys. We've known them for a long time, and um, they have a particularly a client ask from them, which was, um, how can you help it? us more easily activate when it comes to uh, these uh, insertion order dollars and making them programmatic. And likewise, our publishers, uh, the big broadcasters, um, are looking to that progression as well. And so it became a very natural partnership to be able to put our ClearLine technology into the MediaOcean Prisma system and being able to, with a click of the button, turn what used to be just an insertion order generated to a, a publisher into a true programmatic uh, delivery. Uh, and, uh, you know, we just announced that partnership and look forward to uh, the, the coming quarters uh, for the growth of that partnership. Michael, so there's so much inventory and streaming uh, that's become unlocked as so many of the big streamers are going to an uh, ad-supported format, as we all know. Um, and uh, obviously it's driven by consumer choice. Uh, what are the opportunities for, for Magnite in this sort of quick changing world where so publishers are just unlocking so much? Where, where does it go and how might it develop? So that in and of itself is a, is a big story, right? That the only viable model that uh, everyone's come to grips with is that you need to have an ad supported tier, period. Uh, whether it costs four bucks, whether it's free, whatever the case might be, everything's ad supported. And that's a huge development. If you think about two years ago, Netflix was the model, right? And Disney Plus launched late Netflix and quickly everyone's changed now into an ad supported tier. So that in and of itself is just terrific for the whole programmatic uh, industry. From an SSP perspective, I think where we're going to be able to help not just in terms of shifting over those broadcast dollars into uh, uh, the streaming environment, but our, our, I think our role is going to be the, to help democratize the advertising base. This doesn't work. The streaming economics do not work if all we're going to do is replicate what we've done in broadcast and bring it over to streaming. Um, you, you lose economics whenever that occurs. Uh, what does work is if 500 advertisers become 15,000 advertisers, that your pod is totally different than the, the ad pod that I would see when we might be streaming the exact same uh, uh, show in different rooms. And that's when these media companies can start to get tech growth uh, from an advertising growth standpoint. Uh, it just can't go the way it has been. So I think our role in that very fragmented uh, thousands of advertisers becomes probably a more traditional SSP role, aggregating the demand and helping bring it on board in a manner 
that the uh, top uh, streamers uh, w would like. And Michael, finally, a lot of discussion about retail media, commerce media, um, and it's been so interesting to see companies like Albertsons and CVS and Kroger's be not exactly publishers, but they 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 have a, a, a lot of first-party data that's being act activated. What's the role of the SSPs in this emerging commerce world? There's, there's several roles. Uh, one, uh, from a technology standpoint, like uh, we're obviously an SSP, but we also uh, possess uh, an ad server. So uh, our Spring Serve ad server becomes part of that equation. When you get into the ad business, you have to add ads magically appear and you need an ad server for that. So that's an element. And there's also um, retail media network type concepts that involve uh, screens. Uh, so in other words, hotels are leaning into this, um, you know, loosely defined as retail media network because of their loyalty programs. Airlines are leaning into this. And so that requires real technology and that's where we can play a role. But then on the broader side, uh, more often than not, in order to make it effective for a P&G buy at an Albertsons, um, they have to go off owned and operated inventory and chase those users across uh, other environments, more than likely streaming because that's the ad unit they're used to. And so th that's where the SSP, particularly Magnite, excels in being able to help track, bring that inventory into the system and make it seamless for the buyer that they're buying this extended uh, audience footprint across non-ONO and uh, uh, streaming partners that we do business with.